very good evening everybody welcome to another session of retina roundup myself dr hemanta fellow vitro retina and ocular oncology uh, today i will be taking through the top 7 articles of the last month the first article for today's discussion is evaluating photodynamic therapy versus prolysis map as a second line treatment for for polypoidal keratal vasculopathy the background was to compare one year outcomes between intravitreal prolysis map monotherapy and photodynamic uh, therapy as a second line treatment in the patients with uh, polypoidal keratal vasculopathy who did not respond to first line treatment this was a case control study which included eyes with polypoidal keratal vasculopathy that did not respond to aflibercept or ranibizumab the patients were retrospectively uh, registered they compared the outcomes including the best corrected visual acuity anatomical results and the need for additional treatments between intravitreal prolysisumab and a combination treatment using photodynamic therapy as a second line treatment for refractory polypoidal keratal vasculopathy uh, and then coming to the results 22 eyes received intravitreal prolysisumab and 24 eyes underwent photodynamic therapy there were no apparent differences which were observed in best corrected visual acuity and central macular thickness however five patients who received photodynamic therapy did not need any further additional treatment so so hence they concluded that both second line treatments for pcb exhibited similar visual and anatomical outcomes only in the pdt treated eyes were there some patients who did not require further treatment after second line treatment then coming to the second article that is the role of intravitreal methotrexate as an adjunct to local or systemic corticosteroids in vitrectomy for retinal retinal detachment and choroidal detachment the purpose was to evaluate the role of repeated intravitreal methotrexate as an adjunct to plasma vitrectomy management of retinal detachment associated with choroidal detachment here the authors compared anatomical and visual outcomes of retinal retinal detachment associated choroidal detachment eyes that underwent plasma vitrectomy with repeated intravitreal methotrexate that is group b without repeated intravitreal methotrexate that was group so the results were the successful retinal attachment rates was 50% in group a which did not receive repeated intravitreal methotrexate whereas it was 89% in group b which received intravitreal methotrexate injection however the difference was not statistically significant but the group b that is the one which received intravitreal methotrexate had success had significantly greater change in visual acuity from the baseline to the last follow up visit and there were no significant safety concerns with the use of intravitreal methotrexate so the conclusion was repeated intravitreal methotrexate after vitrectomy for retinal retinal detachment associated with detachment proves the outcomes without causing major safety concerns however further studies are necessary to establish the optimal intravitreal methotrexate dosage and duration to recurrence effectively the third article for today's discussion is full thickness macular hole closure with topical medical treatment uh, the purpose was to examine the efficacy and clinical characteristics of successful full thickness macular hole closure with topical treatment this was a retrospective case series of full thickness macular holes managed by a single retinal physician diagnosed between 2017 to 2022 and 68 patients were included with full thickness macular hole 71 patients were spread on topical eye drops that included steroid eye drop carbonic anhydrase inhibitor eye drop and non steroidal anti inflammatory drops out of which seven were secondary to paspalna vitrectomy and 42 were idiopathic macular holes 36.7% of topical treatment achieved closure on topical treatment of which 13 were idiopathic macular holes Since they concluded that uh, the the overall efficacy and clinical characteristics of successful macular hole closure with topical treatment achieved a overall closure rate of thirty six point seven percent, and the higher efficacy in smaller holes and those holes without VMT had a successful rate of full macular hole closure. The fourth article for today's discussion is modification of supracoronal buckling technique for the treatment of retinal retinal detachment. The purpose was to describe modification of supracoronal buckling technique for treatment of retinal detachment, which may improve the safety profile. Here, a single surgeon foot pedal controlled automated supracoronal injection of sodium halide one percent, which was named as Provis, with a microdose injection. 
kit along with one ml syringe was injected separately. Uh, uh, the approach enables better surgeon control during uh, injection of sodium hyaluronate. So here three highly myopic eyes of three patients with primary macula on retinal detachment with a single superior peripheral retinal break were treated successfully and retinal reattachment was achieved in all the eyes without any complications. Hence, they concluded that the injection probe is under foot peripheral control provides a more precise and potentially safer supracorrhinal bucket technique compared with the manual technique for variable injection speed and pressure. The fifth article for today's discussion is comparison of endophthalmitis rates after alcohol-based probe exceeding and powdered iodine antisepsis for intravitreal injections. The objective is to compare the rates of endophthalmitis after intravitreal antibiotic injections with 0.05 chloride HCD and along with 10% covid on iodine antisepsis. This was a retrospective cohort study. The eyes at a single center received focal conjunctival application of either 10% covid on iodine or 0.05% chloride HCD 30 seconds before the injection. The main outcome measure was the rate of endophthalmitis with two groups. Here, there was a statistically significant difference in the rates of endophthalmitis between the two groups as P was less than 0.01, where the rates of endophthalmitis in chlorhexidin group was 0.064%, whereas the rates of endophthalmitis in powder had in 0.021%. Hence, they actually concluded that uh, alcohol-based chloridine hexidine is now considered as a second-line antiseptic agent as the rates of endophthalmitis were high compared to the iodine. The sixth article for today's discussion is thyroid dysfunction and exudative age-related macular degeneration association. The purpose was to establish the association between thyroid dysfunction and exudative age-related macular degeneration. Here, this was a Danish longitudinal nationwide registry based cohort study which included all Danish restaurants between 50 to 100 between 2008 and 2018. Here, there were two groups which were hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism groups, and AMD was classified as an ICD diagnosis of AMD and code of anti of treatment. It included 20,87. 1,305 individuals, of which 59,380, that is 2.8% of them have hypothyroidism, 33,086 had hyperthyroidism. The results told that there was association with isolative AMD with both hyperthyroidism as well as hypothyroidism group, except that the risks were exaggerated in the older part of the population. So hence, they concluded that hyper and hypo both are associated with an increased risk of exhibiting AMD. AMD is a quantitative, quantitative problem in the population and the findings of this study could have a public health impact and further studies are needed to study the underlying mechanism of the association. The last article for today's discussion is comparison of cytokine levels in aqueous humor in vitrectomized eyes versus non-vitrectomized eyes with diabetic macular edema. This study was conducted to compare the concentrations of Roger family growth factors, inflammation-related factors, and addition molecules with the aqueous humor of eyes with diabetic macular edema with and without prior vitrectomy. A total of 31 eyes were included, 11 with DME that had undergone vitrectomy. 9 with DME that had not undergone treatment, 1 from AI related treatments which were used as the controls. The results were vitrectomized DME eyes exhibited significantly higher levels of interleukin 6 and interleukin 8 compared to non vitrectomized eyes. The value was significant, statistically significant. In vitrectomized group, after the correction, there was a significant positive correlation between the levels of VEGF and platelet growth factor where R was. To 0 0.855 and P was less than 0 0.0505. Hence, they concluded that the concentration of interleukin 6 and interleukin 8 in the this river was significantly higher in vitrectomized diabetic macular edema eyes compared to non vitrectomized diabetic eyes, and the level of VEGF was similar in the two, suggesting that inflammation after vitrectomy may be a key factor in the occurrence and development of diabetic macular edema.
Thank you.